Lynn, I call the next part of the dinner special podcast the pressure cooker. I'm going to oh, ask boy. you seven fast and fun questions that we want to know your answers to. Are you up for it? I'm up for it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Great. Number one, which food shows or cooking shows do you watch? Uh, I watch so many cooking shows. It's not even funny how many cooking shows I watch. Um, they're mostly not competition. So um, I watch everything from the stuff on Food Network and Cooking Channel that's demonstrational, like the Pioneer Woman, the Barefoot Contessa. I even watch Semi Homemade with Sandra Lee, which doesn't even exist anymore. Um, I watch The Kitchen. I watch um, America's Test Kitchen. I watch The Chew. I I just watch a lot of food shows. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Number two. What are some food blogs or websites we have to know about? Oh, well, you've actually had a couple of them on your podcast already as guests. Uh, Lily from Kale and Caramel. I also read Cake Spy on a regular basis. There's a lot of blogs that I've been following since the beginning, like Kathy Eats Real Food. Um, she was one of the main reason I, reasons I became a blogger. She knows that. She knows I love her. Um, and I, so I've just been following her in her life forever. Um, I like cupcakes and cashmere. She lives in my neighborhood. So I, you know, stalk her online. <laughs> so embarrassing. But yeah, she's, she's great. I love her site. And uh, I like seeing parts of my neighborhood pop up on her, on her site. It makes me feel like seeing like someone I know on TV. Right. <laughs> uh, and um, Joy the Baker. She's somebody I followed for a very long time, and I've loved every incarnation of everything that she's done. She has like an Instagram feed now called Drake on Cake, where she makes cakes and puts Drake lyrics on them, and it's of course exploded the internet. Um, as is everything she does does. So she's cool. great. Awesome. Number three, who do you follow on Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, or Snapchat that make you happy? Oh. Uh, um, my friend Leslie Durso is a vegan chef, and I just love keeping in touch with her on Snapchat. Uh, my friend Whitney Adams, she has a, a great uh, YouTube channel as well, where she's a she's a wine expert. Um, she is hilarious on Snapchat. I'm just starting to get into the Snapchat game. Um, it's not something for people over the age of twenty something, <laughs> so it's a little strange. But I like just I, I like that world a lot right now because it's people being honest and real because right. it disappears. Right. Great. Uh, number four. What is the most unusual or treasured item you have in your kitchen? Oh my god! I'm not too I'm not too sentimental about stuff in my kitchen. Like things break all the time. Um, but I guess if there was something I was the most sentimental about, it would have to be my mug from college, my Wesleyan mug. Um, it has like four chips in it cause I have dropped it, but I can't bring myself to throw it away cause I went to college with it. It right. was like my, tr- I think I like ate ramen out of it. I can't <laughs> get rid of it. Yeah. So I, I use that all the time, Cool. but it looks like crap. <laughs> it doesn't matter. As long as it doesn't leak, it's all good. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Number five, name one ingredient you used to dislike that you now love. Oh, uh, I think hmm, I, I like everything except, you know, what I didn't like growing up was raw tomatoes, like on the on their own. I really I, I don't even think I would go near one. In fact, when I was younger and I used to drink a lot of orange juice, uh, my mom, I, I would my mom would pour it for me and I would drink it and be like, no, it tastes like raw tomatoes. I think because I thought it tasted like V8. Mm. So I, was, I like sometimes I would, you know, I remember being a jerk and like not refusing to drink my orange juice, even though I liked orange juice because I'd be like, it tastes like raw tomatoes. <laughs> but I like raw tomatoes today. And not like, you know, eating them like apples or anything. No. Yeah. People I, do that. I, yeah. A little help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, they're great. Great. Number six. What are a few cookbooks that make your life better? No, I don't cook from cookbooks that often, but I do use them as inspiration. Um, actually, this is a very sentimental item to me, is the Moosewood cookbook. 
is probably a cookbook that I, um, I've had since college. It was what I first learned to cook from because I used to be a vegetarian and I still use it as inspiration sometimes. Uh, I just love that like it's all hand drawn and uh, it just reminds me of being young and not knowing what oregano was. <laughs> like how far have we come? Right. <laughs> awesome. And finally, number seven, what song or album just makes you want to cook? Oh man, I don't I don't listen to music anymore. As I say, I listen to all these podcasts. But um, I guess you know what puts me in the mood to cook is uh, <laughs> it's a it's a song, the Frim Fram Sauce. Do you know that song? No. Uh, there's a great it, it's a it's a jazz standard, but there's a great version of it that um, I think it's Louis Armstrong and Ella Fitzgerald do. It's a great song. It's all about food. Okay, cool. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to YouTube that. <laughs> it probably has some like innuendo involved, but uh, I I I hear it and I think of food. Perfect. Well, congratulations, Lynn. You have officially survived the pressure cooker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you.